So guys, in the last video, we saw how we can upload image using this Firecam tool, but this thing is still in a evolving state and this has still a lot of issues like I used to figure out, I was figuring out a lot of stuff and so I'm not gonna use now for this now, we are already done with the image uploading stuff. So I'm gonna quickly close this one and now we will get back to our standard playground that we are going to use again. So my server is still spinning up and I'm gonna quickly break it because we are gonna change variable and in this video we can see how we can protect our post, uh, protect a user from creating a post without the authentication. So a lot of authentication stuff will happen here. So we'll start with the models and I'm gonna create a new user model. So we'll basically say user.js and in this I'm gonna bring in from our mongoose we'll bring in our schema as well as model and let me cut that out and we'll simply say const user schema equal to new schema and then it will take a couple of fields so I'm gonna pass that timestamp set it true first of all and then this will take a username so the fields will be username and then the type will be string and that is required so these are the mongoose rules for our new user that has to be followed in order to create a new entry inside of MongoDB and then we need a email of the user so we'll simply copy this and without the email the user cannot log in uh, the user cannot create a register inside our service then also we'll be having something called first name and that will be again string then we have a last name and put it there then we have an avatar image so user will be having an avatar and this time this won't be required by default if something is if nothing is passed we'll use some diff, some sort of default avatar image so we'll pull it up from our google chrome or somewhere else default user image and I'm gonna copy one of them so basically I like this one so I'm gonna copy this link address copy actually we'll simply say copy image address and let's open it up so we have that image I'm gonna copy so if nothing has been provided it will automatically take this value otherwise if we take the value that we will pass it from there and now I think email user ID yeah one more thing that's password so we'll use that password field and that will be again of a type string oops string required set it to true so this is here and now we are gonna register its register inside the collection so I will simply say const user equal to model and this will reference to our users collection inside our database which will use this our user schema so that's how we can do that and now in our resolvers that's it and our main index.js file I'm gonna copy this part again and I wanna export it from here so it will be user from user and now it is exported default from this models directory so that means it is ready to be accessed inside a context because we have already brought everything from our models and then we spread it everything here so if I go ahead and create one test endpoint for example let me quickly go inside our GraphQL I'm just gonna create I'm gonna use this one okay so I'm gonna use this one so for testing and if by this way here we achieve the arguments and then we have the context so I'm gonna use context for now and 
I'm going to use return this string but I'm going to put console log statement so we'll simply say console log context so as I do this now you will find that the user schema will be available there so if I go to my now here npm run dev for now I've, I haven't changed anything so you can say user.js does not provide an export name default okay so there's some issue with my model user so we cre okay so we haven't exported so we are gonna export default and this is a user so which we are gonna export it from here and just gonna access this info query that we have created so inside our playground query info and I'm gonna access that run it you'll find that query sent me that thing but you can see that our user model is already available to be accessed inside our context so I just used it for the dummy thing so let me quickly go ahead and close that uh, clear that whatever we did over here get rid of this console statement and even this is a single line return statement so we don't have to worry about and we are also not gonna work at all in this schema uh, in this one because this was completely dedicated to handling handling the image uploads and all sorts of stuff and now in the resolvers I'm gonna create two files so use a .js and in type definition also I'm gonna create a new file called user.js so here we are gonna define our types of the user as well as in the in our resolver we are going to create our user functions so in our main index.js first of all let's work and then we'll register them inside this main index.js and in the resolver folder also will register that inside the main index.js so we are going to export import first of all our query language so gql from our apollo server express oops so we brought in and then we wanna export default statement gql and within that I'm gonna extend to a type query and we are gonna extend to a type mutation and let's say for example info I'm gonna create uh, uh, info user resolvers and this is gonna be an error function and actually control Z not here actually this will return a string for now and that's fine for now and in the same way I'm gonna export default statement and this will export query as well as our mutation so this is our export default resolver for the user and this one is for our user queries so I'm gonna copy this first of all this function and register inside the resolver and I'm gonna access with the error functions and we'll return something hello statement hello from user resolver so this is just a dummy static thing we are not gonna do much here for now then we need to register that inside our main root so we'll bring user from same directory and we'll bring in that resolver or th this schema user schema and then register inside that array so user we have registered it here and same we are gonna do with this our index.js file inside our resolver folder so I'm gonna bring in that user from our user so whatever has been exported default we'll register that here so we'll simply say user and as I save it there shouldn't be any kind of error and our server will be showing no errors but it says that we have a lot of error syntax expected name found somewhere so let me quickly debug that 
user we have brought in expo default extend type query I'm gonna get rid of this for now because empty mutations cannot work fine and now you can see we have no issues but we have to firstly we have to deal with the our user registration so in this video we are gonna deal with that and also we are also gonna create a function file in here so I'm gonna say new file called user function .js so and let me rename it because this is gonna take all the users functions so we'll export it from here one by one using our index.js file and then we can ex import it anywhere any point of time but also I wanna install one more package called lodash so lodash I'm gonna install that package real quick oops okay so now we are installing that package and we'll define our functions here in our query firstly I'm gonna create a new mutation extend type mutation and first mutation is to create a user on the server so we'll call it that register user and this will take off new user input which will be our type user and that cannot be empty and it will return some kind of uh, some kind of auth response and that also cannot be empty and now we are gonna define that thing here since it is an input I'll call it user input and this is auth response so I'm gonna create input user input and we can always reference back and forth from our user model so it has username email password last name avatar image so we are gonna define those things here so first name last name username password then we have an email and also avatar image okay and this to be type of a string but avatar isn't required but our first name is required so I'm gonna call it string last name is also required and meanwhile our, I'm gonna quickly close my integrated terminal because lodash package has done installing it then username we are having username string we have a password and that is also required and email is also required so so this is our user input type and that cannot be null we cannot pass uh, this is re actually required we cannot uh, escape any of the field except this avatar image now let me quickly check real back with our this avatar image key because I make I do make a lot of spelling mistakes sometimes and that's fine so no, and that to mutation see I made a misspelling mistake then auth response is also not defined and our server will be showing a lot of errors so now we are going to define our auth response and firstly I'm going to define our user type so basically our user can have all these fields let me copy these parts and we are remove we are not exposed exposing our password field so I just got rid of that oops control V control Z let me copy it again and we don't want to expose our password field so that would just do the job then I'm gonna define this auth response type auth response and this will have a user so of type user so we can always chain them so I'm gonna define that here and we have a token and that token will be some kind of a JSON web token so this will be a simple plain string and that is required and this user is also required so now if I do this our server will be up and running again because we have defined all the fields that ever whatever we wanted we want to do that 
and now we're gonna create this register resolver inside our user resolver so that's basically it for now with this with this user model uh, with this user type definition and inside our this user index.js within that query within that mutation it's gonna take an arrow function then arguments <coughs> then we have a context and from the context we are interested in the user model and this is gonna create a user on the server that's why we are gonna use async await function so uh, this function is gonna be asynchronous function and also from our type definition we can simply see our new user object will be coming so I'm gonna extract that from our arguments and now this these both things are available and now we are ready to create our user so once we have received everything from the props as well as we have brought in our user model so now we are gonna create a new user over here so I'm gonna say let user equal to and first of all I have to put some validations here so and later we'll validate our incoming data also with the, some validators and that will be bonus for the next to next video not in this one and the way we can do that is simply by first of all we have to look into the database first FIRST check if the username is already taken and the way we can do that just a second already taken and then we have to look if the email is already taken then if the if both conditions are passed then we'll create not create create new user instance instance and then we have to hash the password password so these are the basic uh, things we steps which you're gonna follow then issue the token uh, then save the save the user to the database and then we have to issue the authentication token so this we these are the steps that we have to follow in order to create a new user so from our new user first of all we'll pull in our email as well as the username so I'm gonna check username as well as the email and we'll destructure de it from this new user object that we are receiving or the incoming user so new user then let user first of all and that user is currently empty so now I'm gonna look into this mm, user equal to await user that find and will pass in our query and basically we are finding one instead of standard find we are just finding one and we'll pass that username so basically we are passing our query over here username and since we are using ES6 and key as well as the value has the same same name then we can get rid of one so this will give me the user uh, user by the username and if that user is there if that user is not null that means we have someone registered with that username and that username is already taken so we will throw new error and we'll simply say username is already taken taken if not then we'll proceed and then again we'll check the user user equal to await and then user dot find one 
and then we'll check for the u email so if that email is registered then this user will get that user and if that again we are gonna check with that so I'm gonna copy this part paste it and we'll say email is already registered taken and registered so this will do rest of the stuff so basically in the database we are querying it querying the user using the mongo queries and then we are looking if that thing is there if it is not null then we will do we'll throw the user out with these errors and one more thing which I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap everything whatever we have inside this function into a try catch block so that we can access standard Apollo error object so I'm gonna return actually throw new Apollo error Apollo error and as I do this it has already brought in from our Apollo server Express and I'm gonna return err dot name uh, not name actually will pass that message and whatever we were throwing out inside our try catch try block so I'm gonna paste everything inside back and these are the messages which are which we are throwing back and that messages will be passed and if you if you hover over here you can also see that it also takes the code so I'm gonna make it forbidden so 403 actually not 403 actually I'm gonna make it 400 so that will be for the bad request and that extension and everything you can you can do you can read about the document read in the documentation what else it can take and how we can use them but for now that would just do our job and if if both the conditions are checked and passed now we'll look we'll create a new user instance so the way you can do that by simply saying let actually not let we'll reuse this user variable that we have defined at the top user equal to new user so now we are gonna we are gonna use this model over here and we'll pass our new user over here so this will create a new user instance and now we'll hash that password so since in the first video remember we installed this package called bcrypt.js so I'm gonna bring a couple of things from there so first of all I'm gonna bring hash from our bcrypt.js and we'll use this hash function in order to hash our password so we'll simply say user dot password field equal to hash and hash is a uh, await so it's a asynchronous task and we'll pass our new user dot password So whatever we have inside our this new user dot password that we are sending here inside this new user password we are gonna hash that and with the 10 rounds of salt so with that we are going to uh, replace our this user instance password with the new users password that whatever we have passed in that and now once we are done with that we are gonna simply let result equal to await we're gonna save that user instance so user dot save and this is an asynchronous start that's why I'm gonna this will take time so we are gonna use await and once we are done with that now we have to look uh, we have to issue a token to authentication token to the user so in our user.js function I'm gonna bring something in the first video we have installed this package called JSON web token so I'm gonna use that here JWT so that we can reuse this function again uh, actually we are gonna import sign from sign from JSON web token so the sign function will sign a token and I'm gonna export a function from here so export const and since it is a function so I'm gonna rename it with a camel cases issue token and this will again a asynchronous task will take a user inside and we'll sign our token using this user object so whatever we have in the payload we'll issue that so let token equal to sign function 
not sync sign function will pass that payload and inside that it takes extra argument that's called an assign if we hover over you can see the payload as well as the secret so we need some kind of secret app secret in order to hash our server uh, issue these tokens so what I'm gonna do inside my ENB I'm gonna create a new uh, constant uh, environment variable basically that will be our secret and that secret will be let me make it super secret so one two three four five six zero so to pull it up inside our app configuration we'll get here and I'm gonna get secret from also from our environment and I'm gonna put comma secret and let me make it at the top so that everything formats nicely looks in a order and let me make it that too and since we have added a new constant to our environment we have to register that thing uh, we have to break our server basically in order to pull up new configuration npm run dev and this is taking a moment to spin up a server and now we'll go to our code now I'm gonna bring in that constant in order to hash our token so I'm gonna import from our base URL from base to up configuration we'll look into the configuration actually we'll get into config and we'll pull in from there secret from there so not this secret which we can use it over here and then it takes the third parameter that's called expires in so if you hover over here you can see the third one is optional options in which we can pass some kind of buffer or the expires in so I'm gonna use this expires in and I'm gonna issue it for a day so which will be 60 into 60 into 24 so this will give me total number of seconds in a day and we can pass it over here in order to issue the token and now we'll return back so and this is gonna be time consuming because a lot of algorithms will be going on so I'll be putting a wait and then we'll return that function return that token that we have created using our user payload okay so that sounds nice and now we're gonna import that function over here in our users so from our functions to our resolver so I'm gonna import from to up and from our functions we'll get into the user functions but I wanna use this index function so I'm gonna write something else from our index in our index export all from our user functions and now with that we can register that function and if that if I save that file we are exporting it everything from whatever we are exporting here we are exporting everything from there and now we will look uh, we'll get into that our user dot uh, this user function actually in our user ds and if I write issue token now you can see that is already picked up so I'm gonna use this function and if I do this uh, let token equal to some kind of uh, I'm gonna use this await issue token function and I'm gonna pass this result but there is a big problem in that first of all in our issue token I wanna return uh, payload using bearer token so this I'm gonna append a bearer in the beginning first of all so that our string whatever the JSON, JSON web token string will get will have a bearer token we'll call it a bearer token at that by appending a bearer keyword in the top with a space so always remember there's a space between token and the bearer the second thing the second issue which we are gonna face is after saving that our user to the database we still will be having our password and we don't password is something that we don't wanna uh, keep it inside any kind of token so it's a kind of protected field so what I'm gonna do is simply gonna put that 
uh, uh, we're gonna remove that password field from our results so whatever we have we're gonna remove it from and now we the way we can do that by simply saying our result so that result will be our result and to object function I'm gonna use this JavaScript function so whatever we have this MongoDB function so since it will be a MongoDB data so that's why we are gonna use this to object function in order to because it will be having a lot of meta values inside that so we have to stream it off and now we're gonna remove that so basically what I'm gonna do since we have installed that package called lodash on the last video now we're gonna make the use of it so I'm gonna create a new function called called serialize user and since it's a utility function that's why I'm writing inside here and I'm gonna bring pick from the lodash so import from our pick from actually lodash and we'll bring in this pick so this is an awesome package uh, to work when you're working with a lot of cool stuff and this will be uh, this will take the user and then we'll pick our user so we can simply say we will return our pick and this user from that user we will just be taking our ID field and one more thing which I forgot since this ID will be underscore ID kind of thing so result result dot ID will be result dot underscore ID so this was something which I wanted to share that and this ID is now serialized to and from that I wanna extract ID username whatever the data you wanna have it inside like let's say I wanna have email to so I wanna pick it from there and then return that thing and since it's a single line state single line return so we can write in a same line and as I do this this will work just fine so now I'm gonna bring in that serialized user function let me close this one here inside our user.js and as I write serialize you can see that serialize is automatically picked up exported from there and now I'm gonna pass this result over there as a user so let actually we'll replace whole result with the new result that we have and we will simply say serialize user and we'll pass our result over there so uh, I think I make I'm making a lot of typos and as I do this save result then issue token then we have the token too and now what I'm gonna do simply make a return statement since it was returning token so that token will be the token which we have already here as well as the users so basically this result will be there and we can also have a lot of stuff so for example user will be this user result and since this result was having in our resolve in our query we can simply say it is returning this whole user data so in our serialize user function we need to uh, we need to add other fields too so first name then the last name and I think avatar image if you want to put it there that's fine if you don't want to put it that's also fine but we'll be having this kind of payload inside that so as I save it we go to our terminal and we'll see that our server started on 4000 and now let's time go ahead and create our create our this user function so register user And this is this is not gonna be query, this will be a mutation. Register new user. And this will be register user. And within that, I'm gonna take new user, which will have the, these fields. 
later we'll be using the variables in order to deal with this query so for now that's fine first name I'm gonna put my name the last name that will be my other and let me verify that uh, let's make it on the next line so that everything looks clean and classy then we have an email so I'm gonna use test at rate hotmail.com and then the password field the password will be and uh, let, let me quickly increase this thing password will be our super secret one that I always gonna use then also I want back I want my avatar URL so for now avatar image I'm gonna put my I can you can find me on Google so I'm gonna use my avatar URL let me close this this is no longer required let me close all the tab even this is not no longer required not even this one so if you check on Narendra uh, Narendra Maurya you'll find my github images and this is my image that I have currently so I'm gonna copy this image address I'm gonna pass it as a URL and that's fine I guess first name last name so this will take we can always hover over there and we can also check the docs inside the schema that we have uh, auth response and that user and that user is defined over here so let me quickly increase this first name last name and we can also see user input so we have first name last name username and password and email so I think we are done with that okay so after that this will return some kind of token and we also want a user and within that user I want name actually not name username email as well as the ID of my user then the password and now the password password since we don't have that we removed it from there to access and first name last name let me say that and whatever fields I want and even avatar your image and as I run this query let me verify this and this comes nice and everything so I have all the fields whatever I wanted to input inside username accept this username field that we don't have and I'm gonna use my username so that's Nandy Mandy one this is my github and instead of this comma we don't need that comma there and let me run this query and see what do we have so we cannot query that field on type user and that's because we haven't uh, defined that thing inside our user schema so we can go to our this user.js and our type definitions and we have to define that type too so it will be an ID field and that is required it cannot be null and now if I go ahead and let me quickly check inside the database if we have that thing created so db dot users dot find dot pretty and if I do this currently we cannot do we cannot see that user has been there is there so now let's go and create that query again and now you can see that token is issued and everything is even I'm getting back my ID even the username and the email and everything but I think avatar image I don't know why it's coming null avatar image so let me quickly check that out and I have that thing everything is inside that okay so I think yes the, the reason behind that is like uh, we resolve this thing using this so I forgot to use that thing avatar image and this would do the job actually so in the next registration if I go ahead and if I re retry to register you can see that username is already taken that message is also coming so I'm gonna change the name now it's saying that email is taken so test 123 at the rate hotmail.com and now if I go and you can that everything you can see that everything is coming and if I go to this jwt.io uh, jwt.io
this uh, URL called jwt.io and here we can validate our token so I just quickly copied this token and we can paste it and we can also see whatever the fields we have inside that token we can decode it very well here but what the thing it cannot it won't show it is the secret which we are gonna use so you can always protect your token using that so you can see that we have that username email avatar image and even you can see that we have a, a expired at uh, expire expires expiration time as well as the I issued at token time so this if I go ahead and check that inside this thing you can see this is on 18 September this has been issued which is today and this one is just now and this is the expiry for a day for a day that's uh, uh, like uh, for a day and we have all the fields inside so that's how we can issue that token and in the next video we'll start looking into how how we can authenticate the user using this token and also get the authenticated user profile uh, using this token so a lot of stuff we have to do and I know this video is kind video is kind of long video but uh, I think you hope you are clear with a lot of basics inside this one so thank you guys hope you enjoyed this tutorial process of learning this no Apollo Server Express and I remember my time when I was learning Apollo Server Express using this uh, not the Apollo I was using graphical and I was still using the standard ES5 syntaxes like Im instead of import import statement so these things are now like made me uh, actually helped me a lot in learning so I just wanted to share those things. Thank you guys. Hope I see you in the next video. Bye bye.